Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Ken and this is Nurse Nisha and this is the next edition of Monday Night Live. Live. We're live right now. We took time out of our day to join you and we hope that you'll join us and talk about health, nutrition, medicine, health optimization, longevity, health span, all that cool stuff. <laughs> We took time out of our day. Yeah. We do this every we're, we've week. Been, we're very busy people. We, yeah, I mean, we are busy. I but. had to water the flowers today, and I, I pushed Becky in the stroller. Well, you did, actually. Yeah, in the mud. Got mud. Yeah, we got mud. Everywhere. Went for a walk, and then we had to spray spray ourselves down like mm. a dog. Yeah. yeah. Mud everywhere. Yeah. I'm so glad to be back with you this evening. Uh, if you have not already done so, tell us where you're watching from. What city, what state, what country. I love seeing where you're at. Put it in the comments. If you've never commented on a video, now's your chance. Just click and, and tell me where you're at right now in the world. You don't have to tell me like your address, you know, your latitude, longitude. Just what city, what, what state, what country. We match. I just realized oh, we're we color coordinated we? tonight. We're, we're so coordinated. That is not on purpose. Sharon, Tennessee, Wisconsin, California. All right. Augusta, Georgia. Nice. Tejas. Where's that? Texas. <laughs> Texas. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Florida. Utah, we love Utah. We are so sad that we didn't get to go yeah. there for the low carb Utah. Salt I'm Lake seeing City. lots of places that I would like to go back to or go to for the first time, but I can't because we miss Texas too. The virus, so we can't go right now. But one day, one day, we will be back to see you where you're at. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about the carnivore diet. It's becoming very popular, and it's not becoming popular because there's an ad agency spending millions of dollars on television and magazine ads. It's becoming very popular because it can perform some amazing health transformations on people who are suffering from chronic disease. And so if you're thinking about carnivore, if you've just gotten started with carnivore, we don't want you to make these five very common mistakes that a lot of people make when they start carnivore. And hopefully if we can get you off to the, on the right foot, on the right track, then you can do carnival right and you can reap the tremendous health benefits, the health harvest that's that awaits you. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Write Sow that your down. carnivore seeds and reap your health harvest. Oh my gosh, that's really good. There you just came just up with that. Boom, right there. Wow. That's how it, that's how it happens. You're so good. <laughs> hey, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. We miss I was just telling Nisha she looks like a Puerto Rican princess. You were? Yeah, right before. Uh -huh. Yeah. You were busy ignoring me. You didn't hear me probably. I was probably busy working. If you know someone who could benefit from this information, please share this. You can start a watch party on Facebook, on YouTube. You can click the share button and share this anywhere on any social media, email, WhatsApp, text message. I mean, you could even write it out in a letter, but that would be kind of a pain in the butt. So oh click the share button and, and help us help other people be healthier. Help me help you. Help me help them. Yeah. They haven't heard about carnivore. You have. I have. She has. But they ain't heard about it. Help me reach them by sharing this video. Okay. Let's get them to it. Let's do it. Okay. No. So what do you know about carnivore? I mean, a smidge. Yeah. The number one uh, thing I see most people do is overcomplicating it. And it is really the most simplistic way of eating out there. Yeah. It's super, super, super simple. Uh, it's just animals and <clears throat> animal products, so cheese, eggs, stuff like that. If a vegan wouldn't eat it, it's carnivore. That's good. Yeah, if a street vegan wouldn't touch it, then it's, it's carnivore. It's probably carnivore. Yeah. So uh, one way that people overcomplicate it is they worry about macros. They worry about uh, too much protein. They worry about too much fat. They worry about all this stuff. Basically, you just need to eat things that come from animals, whether that's meat, milk, cheese, and it needs to not contain the words low fat, fat free, or skim. 
Or cheese product. Or, yeah, cheese food product. Or, yeah, Real right, cheese. right. And so if it's any kind of low-fat, skim, or fat-free, that's no good. You don't want that. That's that's not how our ancestors ate, and that's not where you're going to find your best health. You want full fat, fill in the blank, whatever it is. If it's cheese, you want full fat, real cheese. That just says cheese, not cheese food product. If it's meat, you want a fatty cut of meat. If it's eggs, you definitely want to include the yolk. If it's any kind of dairy, you want to, you want to really focus on getting the fat and the protein out of dairy and leave the carbohydrates, leave the sugars out. It needs to be keto as yes. well as carnivore. So right. milk isn't keto, therefore it can't. Well, it shouldn't be. No, carnivore. it's really not. Uh, and now for children under the age of five, milk is absolutely keto and carnivore because they need milk. But after the age of, of five, six, seven years of age, all of us lose, at, at least to some degree, the ability to break down and digest lactose, which is the sugar in milk. Uh, all of us do this. Now, the majority of the people on this planet cannot digest. They can't break down lactose, and so they're lactose intolerant. Now, I'm not talking about just some people over in somewhere else. The majority of human beings on the planet cannot tolerate lactose. And so for, for adults, milk is not carnivore, milk is not keto, milk is not ancestrally appropriate as an adult. And it can be organ meats or ribeyes or fatty ribs, or fatty oxtail. brisket, oxtail, Ooh. like yes. any part of an animal. Yep. And we really encourage you to eat the organ meats. Now, we're not necessarily saying that the organ meats are mandatory to do carnivore right, because I know a lot of carnivores who never touch organ meat, and they seem to be very healthy and feel great. But it, the way that I read the paleoanthropology, we need the organs. We, we're going to do better with the organ meat than without it. If you can't stomach liver or the organ meat, uh, I've heard a lot of people say that you can freeze liver, yep. chop it up in tiny pieces, put it in the freezer, and then take it as a tablet. That's a super cheap way to do it. Or you can get um, capsules. Yep. There's a couple of brands. The ones that we use are from Ancestral Supplements, and they have one that is all the organs, and then they have liver, spleen, they Heart. have thyroid. I mean, yeah, they they've have got a ton of they've got, well, I mean, literally every organ, they've got a, a supplement. And There's a discount link in the description if yes, you guys definitely. want to buy some of those. Yeah. And, uh, but, I also have a liver it's using chicken liver. So you don't have to eat just beef liver. It can be chicken liver. Exactly. Chicken liver is what I prefer. That's what I was getting to. Yeah. Oh, okay. Duck uh, liver, chicken liver, yeah. sheep, lamb, goat, uh, beef liver, obviously, I think is probably the most nutritious of all. Cod liver is amazing. I love cod liver. Not the oil, but just cod liver. In the, it comes in a tin like sardines. It's really tasty. Uh, any Any animal liver is going to give you an amazing amount of, of nutrition. Yeah. Um, you can make recipes with it. You don't just have to eat it blatant liver in a pan. You don't have to do that. You can make recipes. Chicken liver makes amazing pate or mousse. Um, I'm sure you could put beef liver in with hamburger meat and mix it up. Mm. We do that with heart. Yep. And it makes amazing hamburgers, heart meat. Yep. And we use venison hearts because we harvest our own deer. Yep. My so, dad hunts yep. island. And if you know a turkey hunter or a deer hunter or an elk hunter or a wild boar hunter, tell them if you if you harvest one, please get me the heart and the liver at least. And yeah, if also, they're not going to use it. They're not. Yeah, they're <laughs> going to leave it for the coyotes. And I would much rather you eat it and get the amazing nutrition that's in it. So number one, just don't overcomplicate this. Is grass fed, grass finished, panda massaged a little bit better for you? Probably. Is it worth the the ungodly extra expense? It depends on your financial resources. If you're rolling in dough like Scrooge McDuck, then get the grass finished, grass fed. If you ain't rolling in the dough, then get the best you can afford. Either way, you're still going to reap amazing benefits from eating a carnivore diet. Yeah, chicken hearts are delicious yes, also. Yes. So a lot of people who talk about organs, they're always talking about beef organs, but you can eat the organs from any animal. I think chicken organs are tastier mm, myself. Yeah. But I just prefer, well, lately I haven't eaten any chicken, but there for a while I was just eating chicken. And that's okay.
Oh, we're back. We're back. We're okay. back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. Um, what was I saying? Oh, you don't have to just eat beef. You can eat chicken, duck, goat. Um, we really love duck a lot. And like any animal, fish, seafood, that is, that's meat. You can eat that crustaceans, lobster, shrimp scallops, all that stuff. You yep. don't have to limit yourself to just beef. Now, I know a lot of carnivore purists out there only eat beef, and that's fine if that's what you like, but you don't have to limit yourself to eating only beef. Right. Any meat from any animal, whether it crawls, flies, or swims, that's totally fine. Or if it just floats around. What do oysters do? Crawl, I guess? They have a foot. They do have a foot, yeah. I, yeah. I guess they so just I guess crawl. They like yeah, so they, they're included in the crawling category. Yeah, so yeah. Any, any animal is fine. You're not limited to just beef, but I know a lot of the bigger carnivores do eat beef. But yeah. like we were talking about earlier, the grass-fed beef thing, there's tons of carnivores that don't eat grass-fed. Uh, Kelly Hogan is one. Yep. She literally eats almost all McDonald burger patties, and she has lost, I don't know how much weight, yeah. over 100 pounds, yeah. I think, yeah. and she's in her best health of her life. Literally, McDonald beef yeah. patties. And the majority of the beef that we eat comes from the, the market up the, the, up the street. But right? we are looking for a butcher that does a local yeah. grass fed. That would be great. But Rona has kind of kept us on the household. Yeah. We're on the hunt. Absolutely. But we think we found one. Yeah. Love goat. Love. We love lamb. Yeah. Love lamb. Rack of lamb. Uh, lamb steak. Just lamb. lamb. We really yeah. like lamb. Yeah, I haven't had a cut that I didn't like yet. Yeah, crab legs. Oh, yes, awesome. Yes. Uh, it's uh, Kelly Hogan. Her channel on YouTube, go follow her if you don't, is My Zero Carb Life. Yep. And she's on Instagram as well, same name, My Zero Carb Life. She's amazing. She does lives and interviews all the time, and she's got a great story. And like I said, sees all the benefits without overcomplicating yeah. it. You should see her before and after meat. pictures. Pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, really amazing. Yeah, yeah. She said she was going to come to Tennessee and visit, but I don't know. We're going to have to work that out. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, another thing we see a lot of people is going carnivore, but still using sauces that may have sugar or seasonings that may have right. sugar. And if you're very sensitive to those kind of things, those could stall you or keep you from progressing Absolutely. or give you inflammation and side effects. Yeah, if they're, if they're sugary enough, they could kick you out of ketosis. And so a lot of things we do in life are habit, right? And if you've always eaten your T-bone with A1 steak sauce, that you just consider that to be, they go together, right? Like like uh, walking and feet. But A1 steak sauce, Heinz 57 steak sauce, they're all jacked up on sugar. And so you're going to be getting way too many grams of carbohydrate if you use that sauce. So pay careful attention to any sauces, any rubs any spices, any condiments whatsoever. If they're zero carb, I think they're fine. I use a lot of mustard on my ground, my minced beef or ground beef. It has zero carbohydrates. It tastes really great. It's salty. I think it's fine. It doesn't seem to bother me at all. But if your condiments have carbohydrates, then they're, they're not your condiment friends. Right. So we use uh, Redmond seasonings because we know they're really good and pure. But um, we don't just use salt and pepper, but a lot of carnivores do. Yeah. We some use, just salt. Some just salt. Some nothing. Some don't use anything. They just eat the meat. But we use garlic salt, um, what is it, onion salt, yep. seasoning salt, yep. and then the regular Redmond salt. Yep. And that's pretty much as far as it goes. Now, like, Primal Kitchen makes a keto-friendly steak sauce. So if you're somebody who has to have sauce, technically that's not – carnivore if right. you get into some of the like way more strict rules but if that's how you can do it i think that you're going to still see yeah uh, good yeah benefits. minimize the condiment so uh primal kitchen their their sauces are keto friendly but that does not mean you don't read the label and look at the ingredients and look at the total carbohydrate count you're still going to do that because you you know enough to do that uh, and so I would try to minimize the condiments. If you used to have a little bit of steak with your sauce, try to reverse that and have just a touch of sauce for flavor, but make it a low carb keto friendly sauce and just enough so that you get that flavor. But you need to be eating mainly meat. 
and we're not saying everybody needs to be carnivore. This is That's just, true. That's this right. is just a live stream about carnivore, yes. but that doesn't mean it's for everybody and that everyone should do it. And That's it's right. the end all the be all. That's it may be for saying. everyone, but we're not suggesting that this evening. That'll come at a later date. Uh, but the a carnivore diet is a subset of a ketogenic diet. So it, we're not anti-keto. We haven't turned our backs on keto. Carnivore is keto. It's a subset of the ketogenic way of eating. Yeah. And we're, so we're talking just specifically about that small subset of keto tonight. Also, I'm not carnivore. I'm what I call ketovore, which means I eat 95% animals and rarely any veg at all. But I do add in onion and garlic to yep. most of my meals just because I really like it and it doesn't seem to affect me at all. So yep. I allow for onion and garlic and every now and then I may have an avocado or something like that. But just to be clear, he's carnivore, I'm ketovore. Yes. And every now and then I'll stray. I'll have a, a random Brussels sprout or I'll have a random mushroom. I'm not 100%, but I'm what? 99.5%. Well, I, I feel like that's, it's not veganism. Right, you know exactly. what I mean? That's like right. don't, I don't feel like I should be attacking somebody who's doing carnivore right. and had a salad. Like, well, you're not really a carnivore. I don't care. Right. Do what you want. Yeah, this is not a moral designation. This yeah. is just a this is a health goal you're trying to strive for. I don't care that you kill a plant. Yeah, it's okay. If you <laughs> want to kill a plant, it's care. fine. Uh, let's answer a question real quick. Is carnivore okay if you have abdominal stress tests? I've been carnivore for two months after two years of keto. Lost 85 pounds. Stress test shows a right side block. Yeah. So if you want to keep that blockage from getting any bigger, who was that, by the way? Uh, that was Nikki. Nikki. If you want to keep that blockage from getting any bigger, you want to keep your carbohydrate intake as low as possible. Keep your blood sugar as low as possible. Keep your insulin level as low normal as possible and keep your levels of chronic inflammation as low as possible. And to do that, you're going to eat keto, whether that's carnivore or whether that's just ketogenic. Either way, those are the things that are going to protect you from that blockage getting worse. Right. Uh, another thing, another spice I was going to say, Flavor God has really good spices that are zero carb, but you got to be careful. Not all of them are zero carb, so check the labels, right. but a lot of them are, and they're pretty good. They need more salts, but I'm a salty person. So. <sighs> I need a refill on my water, please. By the way, somebody asked what I'm drinking. It's spring, uh, I mean, not spring, Mountain Valley sparkling water. In a glass. Yeah. It's bottled in glass in Arkansas. Yeah. And it has been since 1843. Yeah. I don't know how we've never heard of it. We switched to Topo. I mean, we switched from Topo to this because of all, watch the last weeks. We talk all about the PFSAs <clears throat> and all that stuff. Um, which brings me to beverages on carnivore. Most people just drink water and coffee. Yep. But there are some people who allow for sugar free beverages, and that's like, when it comes to the N equal one thing, you have you do what's sustainable for you. So if you're eating all meat and a sugar free beverage, and that's what you can sustain for now, and then eventually win yourself off, then you know do what yeah. you can sustain. I think unsweetened tea is fine. I think coffee with no sweetener of any kind, even even the keto friendly sweeteners. Uh, one of the things you want to move away from if you're going to try carnivore is to get away from all sweeteners. Period. And so. Uh, diet Coke, Diet Dr. Pepper every now and then is probably not the end of the world, but I would try not to have that with every meal. But make sure you're getting your electrolytes in. There's so many brands of electrolytes. Who can, I don't care what brand you use. Just get your electrolytes in yes. and make sure you eat a, enough salt. Really, we're all so scared of salt, but you need a lot of salt yeah. on these types salt of Salt your meat. Eating. Absolutely. Salt your eggs. Salt your butter. Yeah, I do that. Salt your tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do that. Yeah. Uh, so some people will cook in oils. Mm. On carnivore, you really need to be cooking in animal fats, and yes. it tastes better oh, anyway. So good. So, trust, trust. Yeah, bacon fat, beef tallow, duck fat, bison tallow, butter, butter. Yeah, Me, there's absolutely. so many options, and they all yeah. taste delicious, and yeah. they make your food taste better. I think they do. And I'll tell you personally, just for me, I feel better when we cook in animal fats, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to back when we used to cook with avocado oil, coconut oil, yeah. olive oil. oil. I, I feel better now. Just overall, I don't know. I can't really describe it. Have you noticed that? That you, I just feel better yeah. if I use an animal-based oil to cook with. I don't miss any of the I really other don't. oils. Yeah. And we're not saying coconut oil is bad. 
or avocado or olive. If it's real and it hasn't been adulterated with canola oil, which many of the brands have, if it's real avocado, coconut, olive, I think it's probably fine. But I personally just feel better with animal fats. Another thing some people may have issues with when switching from keto, ketovore, carnivore is eating too much dairy for them specifically because dairy is keto and it is carnivore. But some people find that they're <clears throat> sensitive to it. It stalls them uh, or yep. it makes them gain weight even. Yep. Some of the amino acids in the protein of dairy are uh, glucogenic. And that does not necessarily mean that it's going to make you go into gluconeogenesis. I'm actually posting a video on, on my YouTube channel in the morning about the carnivore diet and gluconeogenesis. So if you've had questions about that, check YouTube tomorrow and there'll be a new video about that with lots of research in the show notes. Uh, but for, for small children, the, the lactose in milk is fine. They need that. But after a certain age, we do not need lactose. We don't need galactose. We don't need glucose in our diet. We need fat and protein. And so full fat portions of dairy for some people seem to be fine. They don't stall their, their weight loss. They don't cause inflammation. But for me personally, again, it's all about that. You experiment with you and see what work, works best with you. If you're eating a lot of cheese and you're losing fat and you're feeling better and your inflammation's better and your swelling's better, keep eating a lot of cheese. But if you're eating a lot of cheese and you've stalled on any of those things for more than a month, then you might want to try a month with no dairy. Or and cut it in half. Or cut it in half. Exactly. Experiment. And you might find, like I did, damn it, that when I limit cheese, I do better. I, I tend to hold a lower body fat percentage. I have less inflammation, less swelling. I just feel better and do better with less dairy. Yep. Sad. But I was going to say, no one's happy about no, that. No, I'm not happy about <laughs> it. But if you're stalled and you're still having inflammation and edema, it may be the dairy. You may be eating too much for you personally. Uh, Kima, Kime, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm really sorry. What test can I request from my doctor when starting carnivore? My thyroid always comes through as good, but I have a feeling that it's not really. So you need the full thyroid panel. If you'll search on my YouTube channel, for thyroid testing, uh, you'll find the full list of tests and you can write those down and you can take them to your doctor. Do you have that on? You've got that on your channel too, don't it's, you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. either one of our channels, we have a video about the full thyroid panel that you need. Write that down and take it to your doctor and lovingly, gently, respectfully demand the full panel. Uh, okay, so another thing a lot of people get confused about is fat to protein ratios. And that's another thing that's kind of individualized. I think one-to-one -one fat to protein is a good place to start. Yep. And then figure out if you are a person who needs more fat or less fat yep. or more protein and less yep. fat or just play with it. And when she says one-to-one, -one, she's not talking about calories. She's talking about Max. ounces or grams. That's yeah. what she's talking about. Amount. Amount of, of lean to amount of fat. Uh, and I think one-to-one, uh, -one, I, I do very well with one-to-one -one fat to protein. I don't measure that. I don't, I don't record it. I don't calculate it. I just guesstimate. And you can start out doing that too. Now, there are, I, I feel like there's a subset of people who do really good on a higher protein, moderate fat, carnivore. Uh, Dr. Ted Naiman, a good friend of ours, he's a, a huge proponent of raising the protein and lowering the fat. And for some people, they seem to do very, very well with that. Other people, in my personal experience, most people do much better with a high fat, lower, moderate protein, uh, keto or carnivore. And that's going to get that's going to be about a one to one ratio of fat to protein in grams or in ounces, however you measure it. So we don't add fat in to add fat in. We basically just eat fatty cuts of meat. So Cooked in fat. fatty brisket, bacon, fatty ribeyes, fatty pork steaks. Yep. And every, everything is cooked in fat. We cook our eggs and bacon grease. And if I ever do eat veggies, they're also cooked in an animal fat. Yep. But he, and if you accidentally trip and fall and accidentally order a sirloin when you met a ribeye, you can put butter on top and that's going to raise your fat to protein ratio. Uh, you can cook your sirloin in bacon grease. That's going to raise your fat to protein ratio. Uh, so leaner cuts of meat can still be one to one, but you'll add some fat to them or cook them in fat to raise the fat to protein ratio. Yeah. But uh, again, I'm not uh, denigrating 
the the high protein moderate fat some people seem to do amazingly well on that but in my experience it seems just the average mere mortal does best on a one-to-one fat to protein ratio oh let's take a question let's see this is a good one from susan how does one get vitamins and minerals that one usually gets from veggies when on carnivore or keto eating regime go no i'm gonna let you okay this this is susan susan (laughs) the the belief that vegetables are uh, superfoods, that they are just ch- packed full of vitamins and minerals, whereas meat is just protein. That's just a myth, Susan. And I personally, I used to believe that. I was back watching a video me and you made three years ago, and I was talking about you can't get any more vitamin packed than kale. <laughs> Literally, I was saying that. Yeah. But when you, and so Susan, I want you to look up the nutrition facts of kale and the nutrition facts of just cheap ground beef and look at the vitamins and minerals in each one, you're going to be shocked and amazed that the beef has more vitamins and minerals than kale. Yeah, more than spinach. And the problem with a lot of the the green foods like kale and spinach and uh, broccoli is that a lot of the vitamins and minerals that they do contain are bound up by the phytates or the lectins or the fiber, and you can't even absorb the vitamins out of the vegetables. And so when it comes to being a superfood, liver, liver is a true superfood. Egg yolks are a true superfood. Grass-fed pastured butter is a superfood. Vegetables are, that's, it's a myth. I used to believe it too, but I, now if I look up the information, I know that kale's not a superfood. Spinach is not a superfood. They're just, they're kind of, I mean, they're better than Pop-Tarts. They're better than uh, um, Lifesavers candies, but they're not superfoods. So you're, if you'll eat fatty red meat and a serving, a two ounce serving of any kind of liver three times a week, you are going to get literally every vitamin and mineral that you could possibly need in your diet, except for maybe vitamin D and iodine. Okay, that's really the only two things. And then some of the other minerals you may not get enough of, but you're not going to get more of those minerals from the vegetables. You're going to get more minerals and vitamins from meat and organ meats. Mega Fish Guts wants to know, are wieners keto? Well, it depends on your definition of wiener. We're going to say hot dog. Yeah, hot dogs, frankfurters uh, are definitely keto always. Oh, oh, yeah, bratwurst. Mm-hmm. We've got some of those Italian right sausage. But always look at the nutrition facts because some uh, companies will put a lot of sugar in there. And if it's got more than one gram of carbohydrate per serving, put that one back and find another one that has one gram or less of carbohydrates per serving. Peterson's is a really good brand. They don't put any sugar in their meat, and it's all nitrate, nitrite free. If you're somebody who's worried about that, we don't really worry about yeah, that. We don't worry about that. But they are delicious. Yeah. Like their meats are so good. Um, Peterson's with, with a, a D, D, not a T. E D is in dog person. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's take another question. John wants to know, should you carb cycle to prevent psychological insulin resistance to gain metabolic flexibility? That's a very sexy concept. I was fixing to say, wow. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've heard <laughs> gurus out there saying that. The problem with it is it's just a load of crap. Human beings have never carb cycled in our entire existence on this planet, except we would carb cycle once a year. So in the late summer, early fall, when the berries and fruit got ripe, we would carb cycle and we would gain five to 20 pounds for the winter. So if you're interested in gaining weight, gaining fat, then yeah, you can carb cycle. But if you're interested in staying lean and healthy, I would not recommend carb cycling. Yeah, but it's such a sexy sounding concept when you put it that way. All right, so where do people get their vitamin D from then? Supplements and how much? Well, there are vitamin D rich foods. I've got a video on my YouTube channel about that that you can watch. But sometimes living in very northern latitudes, you just don't get enough sunlight because sunlight is the number one place to get your vitamin D. But in the winter or if you live up north or way, way, way down south, you're just not getting enough UV, UV radiation to convert to vitamin D. So you may have to take a vitamin D supplement. Most adults need 5,000 
international units of vitamin D3 once a day and try to get that in a gel cap in olive oil or avocado oil. And that's going to give you a great source of vitamin D through the winter months when you just can't get enough sun. But if the sun's shining, get out in the sun, take your shirt off. I mean, you know. I mean, I think pretty much every carnivore that I know has a shirt off all the day. Absolutely. Time, so. Yeah. It's something about eating meat just makes you take your shirt off. It's a joke. Uh, all right. Rita wants to know, how about potted meat or deviled ham? Is that not organ meat? Yes. Much of that. Yeah, and so bologna, 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 or bologna, depending on where you're from in the world, many times that contains organ meats and tendons and cartilage and all kinds of connective tissue. Now that you may be, if you're new to this, you're like, ooh, gross. No, ooh, yum. Okay, that's the stuff you really want to get in your diet for collagen and for all the vitamins and minerals. A lot of potted meat, a lot of pate, a lot of deviled ham actually contains organ meats. And it's very, very cheap at the grocery. You you can get a, a pack of potted meat for like a dollar nineteen cents here in the, the southern United States. That's cheap. I mean, and you can live on that. So, yeah, a lot of the processed meats that processed meat is bad. No, it's got lots of organ meat in it. So if, if you, you know, if, if, if money is a consideration, eat potted meat, eat spam, eat um, deviled ham. That stuff has got organ meats and it's a very good source of nutrition. All right. Derek wants to know, what does all this do <coughs> to cholesterol levels yep. or does that matter? So for about a third of people who eat carnivore, their cholesterol goes down. About a third of people, it stays the same. And about a third of the people, it goes up. And regardless of which one of those three things it does, it doesn't matter. I got several videos on my YouTube channel about cholesterol. If you or anybody's worried about, oh, will my cholesterol go up? I would highly suggest you watch those videos and read the research down in the show notes that I always link to. Potted meat. Yay. Yeah, potted meat, man. When I was a kid, I thought it was so gross. My grand my grandfather would just he would take a pickle and dig down in there and get that. He'd be like <laughs> potted meat. And I'm like, oh God. Now I, I wish I had a can right now. Pearl, well, we have like a hundred cans because I prepped one we were gonna starve to death. Pearl wants to know how many eggs are too many. Uh, don't eat more than a dozen eggs a day, Pearl. Really? Yeah. Why? It's just arbitrary. I made it up. Oh, you can eat gosh. as many eggs a day. <laughs> you we can eat as many eggs as you want. Yeah. Eat eggs until you're full. Then stop eating eggs. We don't restrict. No. We don't hold back. If we're still hungry, we eat yeah. more meat. <laughs> I want more eggs. I eat more eggs. Yes. We've been very confused in modern society. We've been taught to weigh and measure and count. All that is horse crap. You don't have to do any of that when you're eating the proper human diet, which is what fatty meat is. When you're eating fatty meat, eggs are, that's fat and protein, right? With lots of vitamins and minerals. When you've eaten enough eggs to satisfy your nutritional needs, your hunger hormones are going to turn off. Immediately, you'll be like, oh, I'm, oh no, I don't want, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want any more eggs. That's, that's the sign you make when your hormones go, yep, that's enough. I've got all the nutrition I need for today. Stop eating. You're done. But if you're trying to count, measure, and weigh, and don't do that. We don't have to do that. No animal in the wild does that. None of them are obese. They have plenty to eat unless they've been around humanity too long and they're eating out of garbage dumpsters, in which case they're obese because they're eating our processed food leftovers. Robin says, hey, Nisha, I also have Hashimoto's. How long did it take for your hair to thicken up? Did it thin out more first? I feel like mine has thinned out more. Keto since June, 30 pounds down, pain gone. First of all, let me point out those two awesome things you said at the end. Those are awesome. Yeah. Good job. Congratulations. Uh, it took about, I would say, a year and a half for it to fully thicken up because hair doesn't, you know, the new growth, I, mean, I can show you some of my new growth from postpartum hair loss. It's like, this long and looks ridiculous. <laughs> your hair doesn't just grow, it's so back, cute. you know. So I, I would say it was about a year and a half before it was actually looking thicker, yeah. as opposed to just like sprouts on my head. And I was more when I went more protein heavy and not as veggie heavy. Because when we first started doing this, I 
more veg than meat and now well, yeah. i eat yeah. almost no veg at all yeah. so uh, yeah. i can tell a big difference in the rate of growth in my hair now yeah, I can, that i'm meat based i can tell a big difference in Misha's hair when i run my fingers lovingly through it it's i mean it, it like i feel like i could she's like the girl at the circus that hangs from her hair yeah. i really feel like i could pick her up by her hair it's so strong and so soft but uh, Robin, congratulations on the 30 pound weight loss. And the no pain. Yes. And it's very common. Anytime you lose 20 or more pounds from any diet, you're going to lose some hair. That's just kind of the process. And so don't worry about that. Just make sure you're eating plenty of fatty meat and you're giving your body all the building blocks it needs to make glorious hair. Just be patient. Okay, let's talk about bone broth because that is super uh, carnivore. Yes. It's literally superfood. Yes. Bone broth is so good. It's so tasty, but make your own because that's where you're going to get all the collagen and the yeah. nutrients from making your own. Bought is fine, but it's not as good. Yeah, consider it, uh, what did you call it, stock? Yeah, it's more like just yeah. stock. It's they bouillon. You put it in. Right. Something. Real bone broth is from you putting bones in your pressure cooker, cooker, your your spaghetti pot or your Instapot and cooking those bones for a long time. There should be fat jelly on yes. top. And, Collagen and that doesn't and fat. come in, yes. a, in a kettle and fire box. I yeah, love kettle and fire. Yeah. I use yeah. them to cook other things with, but I don't think that they're as good as making your own. Nothing's better it's than not. homemade bone broth. Just nothing. And that's where the old wives tale of if you're sick, mom would make you chicken soup. What they really meant by that was bone, bone broth. broth. Yeah, that's what they used to make you, and it probably did help you get better faster. But Campbell's soup? No, no, that ain't going to oh help. God. Yeah. I don't think I could eat Campbell's mm -mm. soup. Uh, Maui says, I got my blood work after four months on keto corn, and my triglycerides have a massive drop, and my A1C went from 10.9 to 6.7, and so much more. Thanks for everything you do. That is amazing. Now, it's your, your job to share your story with the whole world, you got to help everybody else who's still diabetic and still obese. You got to help them. That's so awesome. Yeah, love hearing that. Uh, how many days can leftover meats be fridged for? Well, it depends on who you ask. If you ask <laughs> Misha, two or three days. If you ask me, two or three weeks. And here's why I think that's okay. We have this very advanced olfactory instrument built into our face. And it's for smelling meat that's off or bad. And so I take meat out of the fridge. I don't care if it's been in there for a year and a half. I'm going to go. And if it if I'm like, ooh, it's, I'm not going to eat that. Whatever. If it smells, he still eats it. No, no, no. If it, if it has a smell, I'll still eat it. But if it stinks, if it's like, oh, that's burnt. That's how we say ruined here in the South. He literally cooked burnt. with beef tallow that smelled like a donkey's it's, but it smelled today. like asshole a little bit, but it, and I'm he fine. Still ate it. I didn't die, and and I, I'm, I'm not matter. advocating eating eating ruined meat. But if the meat smells fine, the meat is fine. Our noses are so attuned. Like you can eat a uh, lettuce or spinach that's got E. coli all over it, you can't smell it. Okay, but if that meat is off you're going to be able to smell it. just like heavy cream or milk. If it goes bad, you're like, oh, no, I'm not drinking that, right? That's what your nose is for. Use that. Don't waste that meat just because it's been in there for four or five days. Do the sniff test. And don't eat nasty <clears throat> beef tallow. Yeah. If you save beef tallow for too long, you need to put it in the fridge. Uh, bacon, bacon grease bacon grease, can sit yeah. out for yeah. months. Yeah. Bacon grease, butter, months. and ghee can sit on the counter at room temperature for seemingly forever. I've never had I've it never go bad. I've never had bacon grease go bad. Beef tallow? Yeah, beef tallow will get a little bit bad. funky after a few right weeks. Yeah. I, I recommend putting beef towel in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. I get a little cavalier and I mix my beef towel with my bacon grease, and then the beef towel gets rancid and I have to pour it all out. And then somebody. the bacon grease is wasted and Nisha is. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chicken grease, is that okay to ingest? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Any I, grease from know, the meat of any animal. We don't save our chicken grease. Because there's not much grease in yeah, the chicken. But it's totally fine. Oh, yeah. What's it called? Suet or schmaltz? I have no idea. It has names, but I don't know them because we don't we don't save it. Yeah, I prefer bacon grease over any of the other. That's fats. my favorite, hundred percent. Bison tail is pretty yummy. Duck fat is good. Duck fat's pretty yummy. Yeah, try some of that. Um, what about carnivore and fasting? 
Yeah, you absolutely. can, but yeah. you don't have to. Yeah, if you want. And so when you're eating a diet that's full of fatty meat, that remember I was talking about your hunger hormones earlier? That's going to hack your hunger hormones and because you're so full of nutrition. you got all your amino acids and fatty acids and vitamins and minerals. You don't need to eat necessarily again for a long time, maybe even the next day. And so many carnivores will just naturally gravitate to eating twice a day or eating just once a day, eating a big meal, just like a mountain lion would just eat until it's gorged and then not eat again till the next day or the day after that. Many carnivores gravitate towards that naturally, but it's not required. But many people do intermittent fast on carnivore. I do every day. Whoops. Oh, man. Somebody commented seven times in a row, and so I messed something up. Okay. Serena, my husband ate raw steak at work the other day and grossed out his coworkers. Now, we love yeah. some steak tartare, yeah. yeah. okay? Now, what's rule number one before you eat any raw meat? Sniff it. You're going to sniff it. I always buy it fresh. Very fresh. And I buy quality meat. But still for sniff steak it. Tartar, always sniff and it. we make it within like 24 hours. Yep. Yep. And But raw meat is delicious if handled properly and prepared properly and it's fresh and it passes the sniff test. The, the more you cook meat, the less vitamins are left in it. That's pretty much, you can't argue with that. And so if you're currently eating your steaks well done, try to just go back to medium well. And then after a month of that, go to just medium. Try to keep backing it up slowly. You may never eat rare, but at least don't don't keep getting it well done for the rest of your life. Try to try to back it up because you get more vitamins the less it's cooked. Hey Val, been keto for for a year, lost a hundred pounds. What it go? And more importantly, blood work is perfect. Picos is so much better, and I'm going carnivore since I've installed. So thank you. Oh, winning. That is a home run. Love it. That is so Love awesome. It. I hope you're teaching your friends and loved ones about this because I mean you have that's a grand slam home run. That's so awesome. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Hundred pounds. Wow. That's a whole Nisha. Yeah, she lost a whole you. <laughs> wow. That's me holding Beckett. That's how much that is. Oh no no I mean that it's less than that. But you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't weigh on hundred under a hundred pounds. Somebody's gonna be like, oh my God. No. I'm bad at math. That's it. Can a teenager do this safely? 100%. A teenager is still a human being and they need to eat the proper human diet, which is a diet filled with fatty animal products, plus or minus some veg. Yeah, absolutely. Now, most teenagers are more metabolically resilient, meaning they can get away with stuff. So if, if you wanted to add some berries and a little fruit and some veg, that's, that's not a big deal for them. Okay. Unless they're already morbidly obese or have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes or fatty liver, in which case they need to just do carnivore for 30 to 90 days until they reverse that, then they can start to play around with some, some fruit and veg if they want to. But it's, there's, no, there's no additional nutrition in the fruit and veg that you cannot get from fatty meat with organs three times a week. Fun fact, our almost one-year-old who will be one yep. in a, like a week, where is he anyway? He's in there with his lovey. He is basically a carnivore. Yep. He eats food, <laughs> milk, and meat, and cheese. And every now and then he has a little bit of avocado, but he honestly doesn't love it. And he's had some collard greens cooked in bacon grease. He liked those okay. But when I, set, when I set food out for him, I give him a little choice of meat. He just want, and he's over eggs now. He just wants the bacon. Yeah, he just wants bacon and ham. And cheese. What were those? What's that stuff you had? Pancetta. Pancetta. Yeah. Oh, he loves pancetta yeah. and chicken liver. He loves that. He loves yeah. beef ribs and pork ribs. Uh, what else? He loves beef brisket, the fatty parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he loves all that stuff. He loves stuff. pulled pork, too. I get him yep. pulled pork, and he yep. likes that yep. really good. So, yeah, I mean, our kid is off the growth charts. He's for height, for height, not weight, not for weight, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's in the normal range for weight, and he—I think he's pretty dang smart. Seems to be pretty smart. Yep. Yeah, I don't feel like he's having any nutritional deficiencies at all. Oh my gosh, that—it's so fast. Okay, Andy, is liverwurst a decent form of liver? One hundred percent. That's a gateway liver food. Liverwurst, bratwurst, uh, liver loaf—any of those things that contain ground-up liver. That's a great way to start enjoying liver. 
Yeah. Now it's not perfect as, as if you just slice fresh liver and sauteed it in some, some butter, that's perfection. But yeah, liverwurst is a great place to start. Red Butler wants to come say hi. RB. All right. Uh, GG Marie 707 says, I love being on carnivore, but sometimes someone will question me whether it's safe or not. And I get worried questioning if it's truly safe. Yeah. So for the majority of our time on this planet as a species, we've eaten fatty meat. That's that's what we've eaten more of than anything else. Uh, the paleoanthropological record and the stable carbon, uh, the stable isotope analysis shows this. We can tell this. So don't worry that it's not healthy. It seems unhealthy now because we're, we're in the middle of a huge fad diet. That's a plant-based diet. And that's the food pyramid in the, my plate. Those are fads. And when you're right in the middle of a, of a fad, so like for clothes, if you're wearing a classic shirt, but that's not the, the fad right now, you can feel out of place. Like I feel, I feel like this shirt's not faddish enough, but it's a classic shirt. So you should be proud of it and you should own it and you should wear it proudly because uh, yeah, you, you want to always wear the classy thing, right? And you always want to eat the thing that we've always eaten and that's fatty meat. So if you went back in time 50,000 years ago, it would not seem weird or dangerous to eat fatty meat because that's what everybody in the tribe would be eating for dinner. Nuts aren't carnivore because they don't come from an animal. Cheese is carnivore because it, com well, it comes from an animal's It depends on product. what you mean by nuts. Okay, walnuts. Walnuts are not carnivore. <laughs> walnuts, yeah. Cheese is a byproduct from an animal. Nuts yes. come from a plant. Yes. Uh, the crunchy sofa says you'll poop way less and pee way more on carnivore. I thought we needed to talk about poop because yeah, it hasn't talk been talked about. So yeah. a lot of people worry about getting constipated on carnivore. And I know this person actually knows that that's not what's happening here. But I just wanted to use this comment yep. to talk about the poop. fear of being yep. constipated because where are you going to get your fiber? Yeah. Yep. So if you eat lots of fiber-rich vegetables, mm -hmm. right, what will you do a lot of? Poop. poop. Okay, now let's let's do some Socratic method here. Okay. What is poop? It is waste. It's it's waste that your body doesn't is want it? and can't yeah. use. Yeah. That's what waste is. Okay. So when you eat lots of vegetables and lots of fiber and lots of grains and lots of fruits, you have lots of waste, waste which your body does not want and does not need. When you eat a carnivore diet, which is almost pure nutrition, you don't poop nearly as much. And any carnivore will tell you this. You're not going to poop as much because when you eat meat, you absorb virtually everything from the meat, all of it, because it's all nutrition. So, yeah, if you if you want to have lots of waste build up and lots of poop and lots of things rotting in your colon, eat lots of plants. <gasps> Speaking of babies that are cute and have their woody doll, He's got his Woody. Oh, there's oh, baby Becky. Can you see the Woody's nose? Is it good? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hi baby Becky. Stand oh, right there, buddy. Stand right there. Can you boop, do boop, it? Boop, boop. Stand right there. He just wants to. Uh, Give me high five. <gasps> Give five. Yeah, good job, bud. <laughs> So, yeah, don't worry about pooping. Uh, and if you do have any issues, and you can take some magnesium. And Absolutely. Fix you that need problem. some more magnesium anyway. What can else? You say you hi? a good question? Hi. Look at that baby. <gasps> hi, baby. Say hi, hi to that baby. Hi. <laughs> He's so sleepy. He has not <laughs> had a nap since 10. <laughs> Stop trying to strip me. <laughs> Hey, Beckett, you want, you want some ice? Want some ice? You want some ice? Yeah. That's, do you see him make the sign for? More. Well, it's really pretty. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. You, you want some. Eat? You want some ice? Um. <laughs> I love it. His face gets so serious. He's like, oh. So cool. Is that good? Say my birthday's coming up. It's going to be one. I can't believe it. One-year-old baby right there. 
So for his birthday, I will be vlogging it. So if you don't subscribe to my channel, I do what we eat in a day vlogs over there. <laughs> oh no, you dropped it. Okay. Uh, so if you want to see what he and I and Beckett and my parents oh. eat, follow me on my YouTube channel and I'm going to be doing um, Beckett's birthday party, <laughs> which we will have a cheesecake, no sweetener. And then we will have a keto cheesecake for everybody else. And then also have some other tasty keto treats for his birthday party. So make sure you check that out because it's going to be delicious. Yes. All right. What else? Um, is Woody carnivore. <laughs> Woody is, is made of cloth. No, he's not carnivore. But he still has a tasty nose. I'm going to bite his nose. So funny. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you every Monday night at 7 p.m. We we're actually live at four different places on the Internet now. I'm not going to tell you which four they were. I'm gonna, Wherever you're watching from, that's the place you can keep watching from. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard. Oh, if you didn't get enough of us tonight, you can actually get another hour of us tomorrow night in our private Facebook group by becoming a Facebook supporter or a patron on Patreon.com. Uh, I think I've got links to the Patreon page down in the show notes. But if you'll if you'll become either of those, then you can be in our private Facebook uh, group live tomorrow night, Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard. Thanks for your questions. If you guys see anybody that's obviously a newbie, please feel free to, to reach out and make a keto friend or a carnivore friend. Well, we found the light switch, didn't we? I love it. Uh, as always, you guys are part of our keto family. We love you. And uh, what else, Becky? Anything else? Oh, he is having fun with yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And we will see you next week. Love you, mean it. Oh, wait.